In this video, we will be discussing stem and leaf plots and how to construct them, and we'll also be looking at different attributes of a histogram. Let's get started. First, we'll be looking at uh, stem and leaf plots. And with a data set like this, which is discrete, a stem and leaf plot would be really nice. And to start with the stem and leaf plot, you want your data to be ordered from smallest to largest. The data is already conveniently ordered from smallest to largest. And then what you want to do is you want to look at the tens place. So notice that we have the 30s, the 40s, there's three data values in the 40s, then we have 50s, 60s, we have 70s, 80s, 90s, and then we also have hundreds. So if you think about the tens place for hundreds, that would be 10. So we have 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10 for the tens place. So there's the stem. The stem is on the left, left column, and then the leaf. So we would have the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and 100s. And then the leaf, we would just list all the units for each of those stems. So notice that the stem, the first stem is the 30s, and we only have one data value that is in the 30s. That's 33. So the unit would be 3, 33. Next, we go to the 40s. So the stem of four, the second row. And we have three data values, 42, 49, 49. So we go in order, and the leaf would be two for 42, nine for 49, and then another 49. We go through this process until we go through all the data values, going through each row, filling in all the different leaves. Notice that when you complete this, this entire stem and leaf plot, and I have that conveniently created for you all uh, right now, and I'll get that. So here is the completed stem and leaf plot right here. Notice that if we look at the leaves, all the leaves, and we count them all up going down the row, so one in the first row, there's three in the third row, or, or in the second row, there's three in the third row, and go down and, and count up all the leaves that are listed in this entire graph. That'll tell you how many data values there are. And you can tell a lot of information from a stem and leaf plot. And we'll go into um, other type of graphs in just a moment. Now let's go ahead and look at histograms. This is an example of a histogram. I'm not going to discuss how to create the histogram, but we're going to look at a histogram and pull information from it. So first we have to, to look at some definitions and terminology that in, are involved in a histogram there's something called classes. And if we wanted to know how many classes there are, so let's just say number of classes, we would want to look at how many bars there are. Notice that there's one, two, three, four, five bars in total in this histogram. So the number of classes, there's five. There's five classes. And then we can also discuss the class width. The class width is the width of each individual bar. The distance between the beginning of one bar to the end of, of, of another, of, of a bar. So the class width would be, so in this case, the, the width from here to here would be 5 minus 0, which is 5. And we could have taken any class, and we could have done um, the second class, the third class, the fourth class, the fifth class, any way we'd go about it, for example, from here to here, we'll always get the same class width. Every 
class, all five of these classes, all have the same width. That's, that's something you'll notice with the histogram. You'll always have the same class width. So the number of classes and the class width, the same, five. But um, we just notice that, uh, that each class has the same width. Okay, so we can also pull information out of this um, and understand what each of these bars represent. So notice that um, that the vertical axis goes from 0, 1, 2, all the way up to 10. This represents the number of students. And you may also notice that it's also um, referred to as the frequency. It's however many data values fit in each class. So it, if we wanted to look at how many data values are, are in between 0 and 5, we'll notice that there are a total of 2. So there are two data values in between 0 and 5. And then we'll notice that there are three data values between 5 and 10. There's four data values between 10 and 15. There's seven data values between 15 and 20. And then there's nine data values between 20 and 25. Okay, so that tells you not necessarily the exact data values, but it tells you how many data values are in an interval from 0 to 5, from 5 to 10, from 10 to 15, 15 to 20, 20 to 25. Something you'll notice if, if you go back and look at the stem and leaf plot is that the stem and leaf plot, you can see every single data value every single data value by looking at the graph. With, with, the, um, with the histogram, we'll notice that you don't know every single data value, but you know how many data values are in each interval. So you don't know the exact data values, but you know how many data values are in each specific um, interval of values. So there's drawbacks of a histogram, but they're also very, it's also very useful for certain uh, types of data. Okay, so, and we can determine a lot of information from this. We can determine um, the smallest data value, possibly. Um, we, 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 we know that, that, uh, that the smallest value can be as small as zero. We don't necessarily know that zero is the smallest value. We can, but we can also, um, determine, well, some probabilities. We, we can determine the probability. If I asked you what's the probability that we have um, that um, someone spends 10 or more hours playing video games, well, we can determine how many, did, uh, how many people played video games from 10 to 15, from 15 to 20, and 20 to 25. And so that would be four. So I'll just say the probability that x is greater than or, uh, greater than or equal to 10, and 10 or more hours. And that would be equal to four plus seven plus nine. So there's four plus seven plus nine total data values that are 10 or higher, just by looking at these last three bars and how many data values are in each bar. And then we would just divide that by the total number of data values. And that's just adding up the two, three. So I'll just write them down. Two, three, four, seven, and nine. Add up all the, the, the frequencies. That will give you your sample size. And we can determine the probability. So that would be 4 plus 7 plus 9, which is 20, over 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 7 plus 9, which would be 25. And that would be um, 0 0.8, or 80%. So there's a lot of information you can pull out of this by looking at, at a histogram. And um, it's a very useful type of graph.